Welcome. We're so excited to have you join us today for a special pink day. Char shared in the kitchen with Pressure Luck Cooking's Jeffrey Eisner. I'm Jessica Jablon, California Program Coordinator at Char Share It. For those of you who don't know about Char Share It, we help women and families facing breast and ovarian cancer, as well as those who are at elevated genetic risk through free, confidential, and personalized support and resources. We also provide health education throughout the country. One of our goals through COVID is to make sure that we are offering healthy living and cancer prevention information to you during this hard time and giving you what support you need. In addition to our virtual services that can be found on our website or by emailing us, you can also access prior webinars on a variety of cancer related topics um, and access our calendar of upcoming programs through our website. Before we begin, a few housekeeping items. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be posted on Charcheret's website along with the transcript. Participants' faces and names will not be in the recording as long as you remain muted. If you would like to remain private, you can turn off your video and rename yourself. You can also call into the webinar and instructions on how to do that are in the chat box for both options. You may have noticed that all participants were muted upon entry. Please keep yourself on mute throughout the call. If you have questions for Jeffrey, put them in the chat box, either publicly or click on share, share it in the chat box to submit a private question, and we will ask them throughout the program. We will do our best to get as many of the questions answered as we can. We will also send up, out a follow-up email with tips and re recommendations from today's webinar with the recording in the next week or so. We are very excited to be continuing with our Share Share It in the Kitchen series, an initiative in partnership with Cedar sinai here in Los Angeles to empower those of us at risk for breast and ovarian cancer to make healthier diet choices. Prior Share Share It in the Kitchen webinars can be accessed on our website at the link in the chat. You should have received the recipes for today's program in advance, but my colleague is going to put the link in the chat box so you can download it and print it or see it on your screen. We want to thank our generous sponsors, Cedar sinai the Cooperative Agreement DP19-1906 from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Merck, and the Sigmund and Edith Blumenthal Memorial Fund, as well as the Beatrice Milberg Campus Program made possible with support from Sherry and Neil Cohen. It is because of their generous support that we have been able to continue to provide our series of webinars throughout the pandemic. Today is Char Share It Pink Day. It's a worldwide initiative spearheaded by students, communities, and organizations. We wear pink as a way to raise awareness and generate conversation. We engage in tikkun olam, repairing the world, through a wide range of educational and fundraising events happening all over the country. Just like Breast Cancer Awareness Month or seeing someone wearing a pink ribbon can be hard for people who have been touched by breast cancer, we wanna acknowledge that Pink Day can also be a hard time for some. We want to remind you that our clinical team is here to support you and your loved ones. Ultimately, we believe these conversations saved lives. And Pink Day is a great time to be reminded of the signs and symptoms of breast and ovarian cancer. So my colleague is going to put the link to our Know the Facts resource in the chat. I also want to quickly share with you a new resource that we have at Char Share It for men, supported by a generous grant from the Max and Anna Barron Ben and Sarah Barron and Milton Barron Endowment Fund of the Jewish Community Foundation of Los Angeles. This resource, a Know the Facts for Men, shares signs for male breast cancer, melanoma, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, and important information regarding genetics and questions to ask your doctor about your risk. You can order hard copies or download it at the link in the chat. Now, before we get cooking, I wanna introduce you to Karen and her daughter, Jordan, who are going to share their story with us. Hi, I'm Karen, and this is my daughter, Jordan, 15. Um, and I was diagnosed with breast cancer last March via just a routine mammogram. Um, and randomly, the day before I was diagnosed, I was hooked up with Charcher, whom I'd never heard of for work purposes. Somebody introduced me to them. To them and it didn't work for work, but the next day I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I find myself calling Char Sherrod and basically crying on to um, whoever was helping me at the time. And they have been, I, I have no words for how phenomenal Char Sherrod is. I mean, they were 
like my life source, my lifesaver throughout. Um, they immediately hooked me up with wonderful person, Amy Sachs, who's like my lifesaver. Um, she was my therapist here, my helper. Of course, she went maternity leave right away, but you know, that's okay. We're still, we still in contact with her. <laughs> um, but every day was something new. I sure shared. I mean, I would recommend them. You guys are already a step ahead because you're sitting here on this webinar, so you know of them. But I would highly recommend them to anybody. They let me know what to expect. They were there for me no matter what. Every day I would come home and, or not come home, but come be out of chemotherapy and uh, like a package would arrive. I got a cookbook that I use there. Um, I make a lot of things for them now. And, uh, you know, a pillow in this. And I mean, just... It was just so, so wonderful when you're sitting there in chemotherapy and you're sitting there going through this and you're wondering if anybody else is going through you, Sharshare, what you're going through, Sharshare is right there to tell you, yes, here we are. And yes, you're not the only one. Um, they were also a really wonderful resource for my 15 year old daughter. Um, I can let her tell you a little bit about her and experience, but she's really stepped up with them and, and I'm so proud of Sharshar and, and my daughter and everything that they're doing together. Yeah, um, Sharshar definitely impacted my mother like greatly. Every night she would come home or out of chemotherapy to a package and it would just brighten her day. She would obviously, she was affected mentally because of the disease. And I mean, her spirits were always brought up. When she's having a bad day, it would suddenly she'd be happy again. And it was just really nice. And since we've now been in contact with Shoshare, it's, you know, made me want to help and reach out more. And I've had some bake sales, just trying to raise money and do anything like that. And I've been wanting to get, I've been motivated to help out and to learn more about breast cancer and ovarian cancer, because I think a lot of people don't realize how difficult it is for the patient and friends of the patient. And I mean, there was just so much that we've learned and grown from it and it wouldn't be possible without Shoshare. So it's amazing. Yes, yeah. we love Sharshare. They're the best, <laughs> really. And again, I can't say enough about my therapist, Amy. <laughs> She's, and they're all wonderful because I had spoke to others, and, but they are just such a wonderful, caring, wonderful crowd. I have, can't say more about them. Yeah. Yes. Well, so thank you. Thank you. Oh, that it's, it's so heartwarming to hear how, um, you know, sure, sure, it was able to help you when you needed it. And now you're giving back to, to us. Um, and Jordan, you're giving back to us as well. It's just so um, inspiring. And um, we're really grateful for you and all that you do. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to Jeffrey. I'm going to, Jeffrey Eisner is the creator of Pressure Luck Cooking, a leading acclaimed and easy to follow instant pot recipe video blog. Featured on the Food Network, Good Morning America, and frequently on Rachel Ray, he creates his famously flavorful recipes at his home in Queens, New York. His first cookbook, the Step-by-Step -Step Instant Pot Cookbook, which was released at the height of the COVID pandemic, became an instantly lauded number one bestseller, hitting numerous charts, including USA Today, The Wall Street Journal, and The Toronto Star. He was also the number one selling debut cookbook author of 2020. In April of 2021, he released his second cookbook, the much anticipated, the lighter step-by-step -step Instant Pot Cookbook, which became the number one paperback book on USA Today and Publishers Weekly's bestseller lists. It features a slew of more health-conscious recipes tailored to those on keto, paleo, gluten-free, and diabetic-friendly lifestyles. His third cookbook, the Simple Comforts Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook already achieved number one bestseller status on Amazon the day it went on pre-sale for its April 2022 release. Uh, I also want to mention, uh, please stay tuned to the end of the webinar as we're excited to give away a one six-quart instant pot to a lucky person who fills out today's evaluation. Uh, Jeff, thanks so much for being here on Show Shared in the Kitchen. We're so excited to have you um, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Jessica. I really appreciate you having me. It's an enormous honor to be here, especially for a cause that's very important to me. I know people who have been affected by breast cancer, um, and um, I'm, I'm glad to say that those who I know kicked it in the tuchus. So I'm thrilled to be here today um, for a very important cause. I wore my pink shirt in honor of it. It's the only one I have that fits right now. 
thank goodness for aprons to cover my paunch. But anyway, it's, we have, we're going to have a little, we're going to take it back to the Catskills a little bit here, mostly because I'm close to it and because that's my shtick. I, I like to throw some humor into things. It's always good to find some humor if we can and it, when it calls for it the most, I, I believe. So guys, today you're going to have not one, but two recipes being done within an hour in two different Instant Pots. Um, I'll get to the books in a second. I've written three of them. The third one will come out this April. But what I want to focus on now is first a rice dish. Jessica asked me to do a couple of healthy um, recipes, the healthier ones. So that would obviously be focused on my lighter book. However, my rice recipe I'm doing now is actually in my new book, which is comfort food. So I adapted it to be lighter for this situation. We're going to do a brown rice with a garlic ginger scallion oil that we're gonna drizzle on top at the end. It's like this Chinese inspired delicious oil. Uh, it's very light, it's very delicious. And we're gonna get to going right this moment. I'm gonna show you how to do this, all right? Bear with me. You're gonna have, you might have questions and please ask them. We'll pause for some moments when we can get to them. So I have my setup here. I'm gonna lower my camera down. Oh, look, look at my close up. Look at this. My hair looks so much better on this camera than it does in person. I, I swear. I don't know what it is. All right. Let's go down to the pot. Here's my instant pot. This is a six quart instant pot. You can have any size instant pot, whether it's a three, six or eight quart, and it could be any model. It doesn't make a difference. The recipe you guys were given called for two cups of, um, uh, of a brown rice, but I'm only using one cup. So I'm gonna show you how to half this because it's just me and my partner, Richard, eating this. Uh, the rice should be rinsed ahead of time if possible. And I'm going to that add one cup of rice and then it's an equal ratio and one cup of either water or broth. I prefer broth because it adds more flavor into the rice. It'll infuse wonderful flavor in there. Uh, for this situation, you can use a vegetable broth, a garlic broth, if you want to keep it vegetarian, uh, or you can you know, simply use like a chicken broth if you wish. It doesn't matter, any kind of broth you want. So equal parts there, rice and broth or water. So let's just call it liquid. And I'm going to stir it around the pot. The reason why I rinse my rice ahead of time is so it keeps it a little, like less sticky when it's done being cooked. All right. That's all I did, guys. I just added in literally a cup of brown rice and a cup of broth. That's it. Stir it around. We're ready to pressure cook it. All right. All right. Now, brown rice takes a little bit. I'm doing everything backwards, so you got to forgive me here. All right. There we go. Now, a brown rice cooks a little bit longer than white rice. And white rice is usually three minutes at high pressure and a 10 minute natural release followed by a quick release. And you might be saying, what does that even mean? And I'll explain that in a second. But brown rice takes longer and there can be a different, it could be a range of time depending on how al dente you like it. In this situation, I'm doing 25 minutes of pressure cooking with a five minute natural release. It's almost like a reverse of the white rice, but a little more time. It takes a little longer to cook. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing on my Instant Pot screen. I'm gonna lower this. Again, I'm a one-man shop here, so bear with me. I'm gonna hit on my pot the pressure cook button or the manual button, depending on your model. And I wanna go on this for 25 minutes. Like I said, I adjust the time like this. There we go, 25. If your model has a start button on that, you gotta hit it. If it doesn't have a start button, after a few moments of doing nothing, it'll go into the setting and we're on. We're going to pressure cook. I made sure that my lid was sealed and everything like that. Um, now I'll get back to that whole natural release thing when it's time, all right? So now I'm gonna move on to the next pot because like I said, we're doing a few things at once here and I wanna make sure we're as efficient as possible. Here's my other pot. What we're making here, and I'm, gonna, I'm very excited about this, is from my lighter book and we're making some chicken cacciatore, which is one of my favorite dishes. It means hunter, cacciatore in Italian, uh, I guess because they like to hunt chickens. I don't know, but it's delicious, it's healthy, it's good for you, and uh, it's loaded with flavor, loaded with it. In my book, this isn't a kosher recipe. However, this is a kosher situation with this demonstration, so we are going to keep it kosher by simply omitting the ghee or the butter if you have that. And we're just gonna add additional olive oil. So here's what we're gonna do. I've already started to give it a little bit of a head start. By the way, this is what it's gonna look like apparently when it's done, right? Just like this. What you see here is literally what I did. All these pictures in this book, which are all step-by-step -step photos showing you exactly what to do. 
I made every single one of these in my apartment with a photographer and my food stylist. And it was the three of us. So everything you see was in by my own hands in an instant pot. Pretty much always the same instant pot. So to cut that on time a little bit, I've already started and gotten a head start, but I'll explain what I did. I added a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil to my instant pot. You can use any kind of oil you like. I love extra virgin olive oil, especially with an Italian dish of a cacciatore. And then I hit the saute button, different model here. And if it has a start button, you gotta hit that on high. I made sure that the heat was on high. One of the best things about pressure cooking in an instant pot that destroys a slow cooker, in my opinion, is that you can saute in it as if it's just a pot on the stove. It's not only is it gonna do all of its cooking in here, it's just gonna be, it's all truly one pot because I'm sauteing right in this. So I added a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. If I was doing it non-kosher, it would have been three quarters, of, I'm sorry, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and a tablespoon of ghee or butter. But literally you won't miss it too much. The only reason why I added the ghee in the first place was it helps the chicken not stick so much when you're um, sauteing it in the pot. Um, but it's not a big deal. So this, it's going to take about like two or so minutes for that to heat up. What I do now is I got about three to four pounds. It could be okay because if you can't find, how often do you go to the market and find exactly like the amount of pounds of meat that you need? If it's a little give or take, that's fine. Um, and I use bone in chicken thighs with the skin off as well as drumsticks or chicken legs. And I peel the skin off of these things. All right. Now, you can 100% use boneless, skinless thighs if you wish. You can use chicken breasts if you wish. Whatever you prefer, whatever part of the chicken is totally up to you. But for a cacciatore, I like the bone-in situation, so I'm doing that. And it's hard to find bone-in chicken uh, thighs sometimes without the skin on it. So you know what I did, by the way, a little tip. I took the skin off, I had a spare onion, opening my fridge up. I made with those that still those skins, I made some schmaltz. You gotta have the schmaltz, right? This is gonna come in very handy for those matzo balls in a couple months. So I'm very excited about that. To take the skins, throw them in a, a frying pan if it's nonstick, basically cook them with nothing in there, let them reduce to nothing, all the, the oil and the fat's gonna come out, throw in an onion and strain it and then poof, you have schmaltz. All right, so we're heating up here, I have, my chicken, I had a lot more than this, but it's already done most of it, and I'll get to that when we're done with this. And I'm gonna put it in my pot. I put in a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. The reason why you see some stuff going on in there is because I've already previously, like I said, did most of the um, searing of the chicken. And I just seasoned each piece of chicken with some salt and pepper, or kosher salt, of course. Kosher salt makes everything taste better. And now I'm just gonna simply put this inside the Instant Pot and saute it for just um you know about you know, what i say like 20 seconds i think on each side and the thing we can go a little longer because it's gonna you know it has to get a little hot first um but we don't want this to be super super like cooked it's not going to be cooked at all frankly it's going to be very much still uncooked but it's just giving it a slight browned exterior to the chicken give it a little bit of some texture there notice we're not using any flour or anything like that here it's not necessary all right and then you can give it a little flip if you want. You see? Very nice. It browns pretty quickly when you have the uh, salt and pepper on there, it adds to it, which I love. Um, and this is a thing we'll do in batches. So if I had more chicken, which I did, and I'll show you now, I've already done all these, all right? These all cook in that same oil you're seeing right there. All right. Give it another quick little brown, and it smells so good. It's like really like a flash sear. It's really what this is. It's like a flash sear. You know what I mean? All right, all right. I think we're looking fine for the sake of this. I'm going to speed it up a bit. Add this to my all my other chicken. I've gone through all of it. Whoop! I just got oil on my beautiful pink shirt because I'm a little bit of a klutz sometimes. There we go. How sad. Look at this. Look at th look at that. Just just so sad. The things I do. But it's okay. We're moving on. That's why you, it's just funny because I never wear an apron when I cook. And the time I put an apron on, it splatters all over my arm. Let's keep going. All right. So now we have that oil hot. We have our chicken all nice and quickly seared. 
Set that aside, time to add the veggies to the mix. I'm adding in one sweet or Vidalia onion. My, my partner, Richard's from the South, so I learned, I used to say Vidalia. He goes, no, it's Vidalia. So I was corrected. I understand now. Uh, one, one Vidalia onion, uh, two green bell peppers. Add that. Dice, everything is diced. And I love mushrooms in this dish. If you don't like them, you don't have to add them. Eight ounces of sliced baby bella mushrooms. Pre-sliced is always nice. All right, and now we're gonna saute the veggies in the oil in the pot. And normally that will take about five minutes or so. So while that's happening, I'm gonna see that from here. Let's come up here. And I'm gonna let Jessica, if there's any questions so far, feel free to ask me one while I do some of this sauteing. Don't right, be shy was, guys, ask. There, there was a question that came in with uh, the registration from somebody who said, I made something once, it boiled over, and then I put it in my closet. Help. <laughs> Have her follow my recipes or they them follow my recipes and that won't happen. I guess that's my answer. <laughs> um, my help for you is find a trusted source like Pressure Luck or there's a few bloggers out there who know what they're talking about with this thing and follow one of their recipes to the T. Make sure the instructions are well written and or just get one of my books and follow how visual they look at this. And it's impossible to mess up. It shows you what you should be doing with each step. That's my answer. A, a question just came in about yeah. uh, the bottom. Uh, do you need to scrape the bottom of the pot after taking out the chicken? That's a really good question that, as we're doing this. Look at this. Right now, the bottom of the pot is a little bit brown. You see that in there? It's, it's hard to tell. It's a little bit brown. And that's all gonna come out eventually because as these veggies are sauteing and getting a little bit soft in these moments, they are sweating, especially the mushrooms and the onion. Um, and that's good. They're gonna be releasing some juices in there as they cook. And then from that point on, we'll begin to be able to deglaze or scrape the bottom out, but we're gonna have a little other ingredient coming up soon, which will really get the bottom completely clear. Um, we got a, a number of questions. I see one came in the chat and I was asked a number of times in the registration as well about the, the, the difference between the old fashioned pressure cookers and an Instant Pot or a similar um, brand. Um, and uh, and whether they're safer, that kind of a question. So I wouldn't go near uh, an old school pressure cooker. Um, it's I was never interested in it. I'm still not interested in it. It's not that I'm scared of it. It's just that they just seem like a lot of work, and you have to run them under cold water when they're done. It's like a whole thing. I'm not interested. Um, this thing, well, you're going to see for yourself right now what it does. It's literally acting as if this is a pot on the stove right now. I'm just sauteing veggies. I've slightly seared some chicken. And uh, then we're gonna start pressure cooking. This is super safe. It has a lid that you'll see when I started with the rice, it locks in. And then it keep, once the, the pot comes to pressure, which it's going to any moment the rice right now, and you'll see this one come to pressure when the time comes, uh, a pin pops up, keeping the lid completely locked in place. So you don't have to worry about anything. It's very safe. It's, it truly is. Uh, just of course, use your common sense and always don't, if something doesn't look right to you and if something, just be mindful always. Like that's my advice there. But it's night and day between this and an old school stovetop pressure cooker. This is not scary. It doesn't have scary clamps. It just has a nice secure lid. So true. Um, if a rice recipe is cut in half, does the time need to be adjusted? No. Most recipes do not when you are uh, having most will always say the same. So there you have that. It's really just, maybe if it's like a, if it's a roast where you're having like cutting a roast they have from like six pound roast to three pound roast, you use a little bit less time, right? Uh, but when it comes down to most other things like rice, no, same amount of time if you're having it. I actually just have it. What you guys have is two cups of rice and two cups of broth mixed together. I did one cup of each and I'm using the same amount of time. Someone was interested in why you call it pressure luck cooking. I like plays on words and it's almost like, but last year, well, I'm going to press my luck cooking today. And then the whole thing with the instant pot is how I really got started doing this. And um, that's kind of where it came from. It's a fun play on words. All right. So we're done pretty much now with the sauteing. I'm going to speed this up a bit. 
Um, and here we have it. Look at that. You see that it's a little bit brown on the bottom. We're, we're getting nice and soft here with our veggies. Don't worry, they don't have to be super tender at this point. That's completely fine. Now we're going to add in what's going to completely deglaze the bottom of this pot and make it nice and smooth. A quarter of a cup of a dry red wine, like a Pinot Noir or a Cabernet Sauvignon. Never use the store-bought cooking wine. It's Don't use the wine you, you wouldn't drink, they say, right? It doesn't have to be expensive. I got this from Costco, a cheap $8 bottle. Totally fine. Add this to the bottom of the pot. And as soon as I add that wine, everything that was stuck on it is, you see, if you see this, am I, do you see like this brown spot right here? I'm trying to make so the camera, you can see it. It's all coming up immediately. It's like magic. And I'll tell you, wine and Worcestershire Shire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, are the magic things that make that happen at the bottom of the pot. Now this pot is super smooth. If you don't want to do wine, you can't tolerate it, you don't want it, I understand. Just add in at that point about a quarter of a cup of broth. It'll still help you deglaze the bottom of that pot. The point is we want the bottom of the pot as smooth as possible because if it's too caked on with brown bits, it's going to have some trouble coming to pressure when we put that little. All right, so let's recap what we've done here. By the way, do you see this pot down here? You hear that little steaming sound? That's the pin. It's about to pop up. My rice is about to come to pressure and start cooking. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I've added my wine. We're having fun here. We deglazed. And now what I want to do is I want to add in my tomato element to this dish because it's not a cacciatore without some tomatoes. I'm going to add in a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. You can use a no salt added version or any kind you wish. If you wanna watch sodium, no salt added is always a good choice. And um, a cup of crushed tomatoes. If you also wanna do no salt added, go for it. Um, the smallest can I can find on these is usually 15 ounces. So I just add about half that can in there. All right. I'm going to add in just a half a cup of chicken broth, low sodium chicken broth. Um, some people say you need at least a cup. That's not true in this situation. I promise you it'll all work out. Add that in there. Because the chicken everything, all that jazz is going to also emit wonderful rich flavor uh, and sauce and, and drippings. Even though we have the skin off, it'll still find a way. Now let's season it up with one teaspoon each of seasoned salt, pepper, black pepper, ground or rub sage or dry sage, and dried thyme. A teaspoon each. And those are my seasonings. And I'm just trying to see here. Did I totally just miss my... Oh, I'm silly. I forgot to put the garlic in the pot. I'm supposed to add in six cloves of garlic uh, right after I sauteed the veggies. And you know what? That's good. I'm glad I screwed up a little bit because that's not going to make any difference at the end of the day. Just stir it in now. Totally fine. And by the way, a little trick about garlic. If you're like me and a little bit lazy... You don't have to, you know, take six actual cloves of garlic and like chop them up. It's sticky. It's a lot of shenanigans to deal with, right? Just go to the market. I won't tell. You don't have to tell. And get, get the stuff that it's already like minced or jarred. It's fine. If you don't want to do that, by all means, by, feel free to chop your own garlic. I, it, some people are very much serious about that. I get it. Fine. But my whole thing is about easy cooking. And, and honestly, in this situation, you're not going to tell the difference. I don't think you will. All right. So look at this. It already smells amazing in here. We have basically at this point, basically, it looks like a vegetable stew. Now we're going to lay our chicken back in the pot. Oh, that beautiful chicken. I'm so sad that I splashed all that oil on my beautiful pink shirt. Let's do it. Let's nestle the chicken in. Right. And like I said, you can use really any type of chick part of the chicken that you like for this. Try to keep the skin off, especially since it's not going to be like crisp. It's not going to be pleasant to have skin that's not like crispy, in my opinion. All right. Let's get that chicken in there. Okay. And. There we go. Perfect. Now what I want to do 
is I want to okay. put it on top of the pot. And now you're going to see I'm going to hit the cancel button and then hit the pressure cook button or manual button, depending on your model. I want to go just for six minutes at high pressure. And that is it. Hit start. Presto. Okay. So I have that cooking and we're good to go. Now, while my rice is cooking, what I want to do is I want to create that ginger scallion sauce. I feel like I'm going constantly back and forth. It's almost like an episode of I Love Lucy. Lots of slapstick here, my friends. Lots of it. Always hijinks. Um, to make this, hang on one second. Okay. I am going to, sorry, I had a little technical difficulty there. I am going to take um, my food processor. I'm going to add to that some scallions. That's a whole bunch of scallions, by the way, that I put in there, just the lower part of the scallions that are uh, like extra crunchy, as well as about four inches of a knob of garlic that I've peeled and chopped up. To that I also want to add in, <clears throat> well, actually I don't want to add anything else. I'll do that next part just in a moment. I'm going to pulse this up in my food processor. Okay, excellent. Second. There we go. My other Instant Pot is having a little bit of an issue there. All right, perfect. Now what I want to do is, number are you here? I'm going to simply just take all of my wonderfully, completely, basically blended garlic and ginger, and I'm going to take a salad dressing holder, okay? You know, one of these things, like, Get these online, these are very convenient to do it this way. And I'm to that, I'm going to add in uh, two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil or any kind of oil you really like, that's completely fine. And then from there, I'm going to take what I've just done here and add it right into the oil. You can use, like I said, you could use avocado oil, you can use any oil you want, but I'm using vegetable for the situation, whatever you choose, whatever is healthiest for you or best for you. All right. And my other Instant Pot is giving me some sort of issue. It's, it, I think <laughs> I'm gonna have to start my rice over again because it's saying that it, it looks like this Instant Pot had a technical glitch. So hang on, we'll get back to that in a second. Let me pull that plug up because it's driving me crazy. But we'll get to that rice, don't you worry about it. Uh, here we go. I'll just do it with white rice so we save some time. Put that in there. All right, excellent. And now I wanna add in, this is good. I mean, you could add in as much of this as you want. You don't have to add the entire amount that you added uh, in terms of what you just chopped up, but I like adding as much as possible. I'm gonna add in a half a uh, teaspoon of kosher salt and two teaspoons of soy sauce. And now I'm gonna shake this up in my salad dressing thing like this. Okay, and I have this amazing, amazing ginger scallion oil that goes wonderfully on that rice, which I'm going to just do again in just a moment because I don't know what happened here, but we'll fix this. We'll have the other rice. So please, actually, um, here we go. I'm gonna use my other Instant Pot because I'm just loaded with Instant Pots here. They keep giving me Instant Pots. I keep playing with all these different models. So this is what we do in a pinch. So jasmine rice, I gotta measure it out. Cup. 
And again, I'm going to do normally I would have done brown for the situation, but it's going to take a little too long. And I'm afraid it's that it's we're going to run out of time. So white is quicker. A cup of that. All right. And then a cup of water or broth, whatever you want. Like I said, you can use either one. Broth will make it more flavorful. And then mix that up. All right. Secure my lid. And second, plug you in here. And I'm going to go on this for white rice. Hit the pressure cook button for just three minutes. And then we'll go on to a 10 minute natural release. And again, I'll explain what that is shortly. Okay. You know, I've done like 50 demos at this point. I've never had an instant pot die on me in the middle of one. Really I've been using that pot. I've been using that. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, it's just a reminder that sometimes we have to be flexible. And, and if, if yeah. anything COVID has taught us, it is that we need to be flexible. So, yes. we, you know, we understand. And, and I'm actually excited to be able to have like another exciting bonus recipe, right? We get to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Things. I mean, look, at the end of the day, it's food and there's always pizza or something like that. But <laughs> it's, um, you know, what can you do? I luckily have extra instant pots around. So but we'll be fine. But uh, yeah, just in the future, there's nothing to freak out about or worry about if that ever happens. You'll be totally fine. Um, but yeah, we're going to be pressure cooking our white rice. And then, uh, yeah, we'll add that on there. And in the meantime, we have our chicken cooking. We have our rice cooking. We've already created our wonderful ginger scallion oil, which is so delicious over pretty much anything. And this rice is very simple. It's literally just going to be the rice with some of this on top. Simple as that. Um, and if we have any other questions, Jessica, feel free. Feel there, the are, there were a bunch, there's a bunch of activity happening in the chat. Um, there is a, someone had a question. She says, when I have had trouble with my Instant Pot when I saute and then cook, and after the sauce, I then pressure cook, and then I get the burn setting, help. Um, well, it depends. There's a lot of ways to, to, to evaluate the situation if you get a burn situation. Typically, how would you repeat that in terms of was, was there sauce already in the pot? It says after the sauce. Uh, after oh, the I, sauce. I guess they mix sauce in when they pressure cook. Typically, so here's yeah. the thing. Sometimes when you cook in the Instant Pot, something like a tomato type situation like I did with the cacciatore, um, if you don't balance it out right with the proper amount of liquid, which I did, I put only a half a cup of broth in there, uh, but I, the chicken is going to release lots of juices. And it was also cooking some olive oil ahead of time. It balances it out. It'll make it, and you're going to see there's going to be a lot more liquid in that pot than full when we began. Um, you're okay. It's about the ratios. If you want to add sauce in or something before you pressure cook, make sure you have enough liquid in there because if it's too thick, It'll give you that burn notice. Um, that's that's good to know because um, I know I've gotten that burn notice too. Um, if you have an eight quart instant pot, can you make a small amount of something? Um, yes, absolutely. All the recipes that I do in my books are made in a six quart instant pot. But if you could do it in a six quart, you can certainly do it in an eight quart. You just double the situation. And if you're doing it in a three quart, which is the smallest size, you simply you can have it. So. That's how it works. Um, if you use boneless chicken, does it change the cooking time? No, it'll be the same cooking time. Uh, somebody has a Zaver with high and low pressure cook options. Do you recommend high or low for the brown rice? I always cook at high pressure for brown rice, for any, any dish. It's always high pressure for me. But let me also um, explain something to you really quickly about pressure cooking in time, okay? So I said, this chicken dish for six minutes. That doesn't mean when I hit six minutes now, it's from the time I started it, it's going to be done in those six minutes. That means that has the pot first has to build pressure, right? Everything has to get really hot in there. And it's going to be, we have a lid on top where it has, the steam has nowhere to go. And basically at that point, it pushes that pin up almost like a tea kettle whistling. And then from that moment on, once the pot realizes that the steam is locked in, because it's built up enough of it in there, that's when it starts to count the time down for. So in my books, I make sure that you're well aware ahead of time that um, you have a timing bar showing you the prep time to the saute time to the pressure building time. That's the time right that we're in right now for both the rice and the, the chicken cacciatore um, to factor that into everything. And then the pressure cook time 
and if there's a natural release time and then the total time. By the way, there I can't really explain everything in just one quick little video. So it's super important if you're really interested in learning how to use Instant Pot, which is one of the easiest things you'll ever do. You could have never cooked a day in your life and this thing will be one of the easiest things you'll ever have cooked in. My book has the introduction. It's a very short, simple read. It tells you everything. Forget the manual that came with these. Read that. It has everything you need to know. So right now, we have some pressure being built up in this Instant Pot. And I can hear it going on. It's like, you know, this is when my rice was cooking in. Um, so pretty soon. because So by the way, let me speak to this. This is going to come to pressure much more quickly than uh, the chicken will because the chicken had a lot going on in the pot. The more volume in the pot, the more time it'll take to come to pressure. And the less volume, like the rice, will only have one cup of water and one cup of rice. You see this? That means it's going to take um, less time for it to come to pressure. Uh, this model that I have right here is the brand new Instant Pot Pro Plus. And actually, the pin is not visible, but it did just pop up because you could hear it inside. It's inside the lid, the pin, unlike the other models where you have a little silver pin. Uh, see, I'll show you this one. This is a little pin. When that pops up, you see this, like this? Gosh, it's not giving me a good angle. Okay, there we go. When that thing pops up normally, that's when the pot has come to pressure. This one, you won't see that in this model, the Pro Plus. Um, so at any moment now, this is going to start to count down from three minutes, uh, which is what we set the time for. And then I'll explain after that the natural release situation. Um, yeah. You any other, if you have any other questions, please yeah, do that. There, there are a lot of questions. Um, somebody was asking about your cookbooks, whether or not um, they're most interested in plant-based recipes and can the recipes be adapted? Yeah, yeah, you know, anytime you see like a ground beef situation, you can use like Impossible or Beyond Meat, anything plant-based there, that's absolutely fine. Uh, any recipe, the way I look at it is, you look at a recipe as a blueprint, right? You can see how long it takes to cook something and how many amounts and the right spices to make it, the flavors really sing in the dish. But if you're like, I, I don't, I want it to be more plant-based versus meat-based, that's when you get to play with it and do a few different things. You know what I mean? Of your own and put some touches on it. You can really do anything. For instance, in um, like what we were doing with this dish with the rice, I said, I want brown rice instead of white rice. I could have done that if my Instant Pot didn't have a malfunction. <laughs> but um, now because we're speeding it along, I'm doing right. But you can 100% do that. And normally, by the way, Instant Pot, that doesn't happen normally. But I literally work these babies in the day and night. So at some point, it's bound to have an issue. Um, so yeah, anything can be substituted. This is the, the really short answer to that very long answer I just gave. Uh, there was a question about using frozen chicken. Um, or turkey? I don't ever recommend frozen uh, chicken because it tastes dry to me when it's cooked. You can, but just if you can, just let it thaw out in the morning. You know, just let it do that. Put it in the refrigerator the day before. It just makes a difference to me. Um, however, if you absolutely can't and you're really strapped, well, that's completely up to you. You can totally add it in. And you just add about five more minutes of time, if that depending on what kind of chicken. Now look at this. This is my, where my cacciatore is right now. The pot is about to come to pressure. Do you see like all the steam coming out of this pin? It's, a, it's hard to see, maybe I should stand in front of it. Yeah, I can you see, see that. that. Okay, so this, any moment now, this is gonna pop up and that means the steam has nowhere to go. From that point on, it's gonna start counting down in those six minutes. So it's getting close to that at this point. Uh, and I would say that this is probably going to be done, I'll estimate, within 10 minutes-ish, 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to be done with this chicken. All right. So I want to take a quick moment to also explain about, you notice in this oil that I made here, you can use any oil. I use vegetable oil, but you can use any that you prefer. Um, I use soy sauce in there. If soy sauce isn't for you, and because, you know, there is usually wheat in there, which means there's gluten. Um, you can use something called tamari, which is basically a wheat-free soy sauce. It tastes pretty much exactly the same. I cannot tell that if it was going to give me a blind taste test, I couldn't tell you the difference. 
or you don't want to use um, have any wheat in there or soy try something called coconut aminos. It tastes kind of like soy sauce and a teriyaki sauce combined. It tastes nothing like coconut, and that's good because I wouldn't really want it if it had coconut in there. I'm okay with coconut, but not like in a soy sauce situation. Try that. So there's always substitutes, and I list that in the lighter book, in the introduction. Um, um, there were a couple of questions that came in about which Instant Pot model you would recommend and what your thoughts are about the air fryer co combo. Um, Instant Pot? I recommend if anyone's starting with an Instant Pot, just get a simple Instant Pot Duo six quart. They're very affordable these days. Get it, just the, the Duo six quart. If you find that you really love it and you like, you'll eventually probably want a second Instant Pot so you can do two things at once. The thing that's great about an Instant Pot also it doesn't heat the kitchen up. I mean, I'm schwitzing a little bit right now, but that's just because I am. And that's how I've always been. <laughs> but um, and I'm also running around. But um, this doesn't heat your kitchen up. It's wonderful that way. It's so great. Um, yeah, I think I just answered that. I, I'm, my brain is in ten places right now, so I apologize. No, that was that that you answered that. And then, um, do you do you use the air fryer, the instant? Pot oh, the air fryer, lid, the air fryer. Yeah. Uh, I do have the air fryer lid model as well, which is great because that in that situation, when a dish is done on your pot, it comes with a separate a se another lid. By the way, this pot just came to pressure. Um, and it's gonna do with some sounds because this is a different model that has an automatic release. So you have that situation. Um, the air fryer lid, you when you're done cooking, instead of base, if you wanna get something like a cheesy or uh, obviously when a kosher situation, let's say we're just making mac and cheese, there's no meat involved. Um, I wanna like when I'm done, give it like a, or like a Ritz crackery crust or something on top. I can take some Ritz crackers, smash them up, mix them up with a little bit of butter or something like that, and then lay it on top, put the air fryer lid on top so I don't have to transfer anywhere. It's a separate lid, right? It sits right on top like this lid, and it will basically blow hot air onto it and then bake it in there. It gives it a nice little finish. That's always a nice touch to have. All right, so we're moving down here really quickly. I want to show you my situation here we have one minute remaining on my rice okay we have one minute which is wonderful when this is done pressure cooking which is going to be in less than a minute now you're going to see the screen's going to switch to four zeros uh or it's going to say l000 sometimes it has one or the other all right there we go it's four zeros normally if i said the dish would have a quick release we would release the steam now which actually i don't want it to do Okay, uh, and this one you have to actually do the release on the screen. It's a brand new model. You don't actually touch the top of the lid to get it to come out. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't, if I'm, by me angling this back, it's actually making that happen. So I'm not going to do that. Okay, so you see it has four zeros. It's hard to see because it's mirrored, this display. Yeah. I mean, it's real fancy. Um, I want to wait for that to count to 10. That means 10 minutes have elapsed. And that means it's 10 minutes of the steam naturally releasing on its own. Set a timer for nine minutes. I just pulled my watch. Nine minutes, starting now. Thank you. You're so fabulous. Uh, I'll now know that in a few in, in that time to come back and get ready to be appreciated. Well, you're very welcome. My watch is so like we're my best friends, I guess. I just talk to my hand all the time. All right, so there you go, guys. Uh, if it was a natural release, that's what I just did. I you, you have a specified time. In this case, it's ten minutes, and uh, and basically ten minutes from now, I'll come back and finish with a quick release. If it was a quick release. I would just release the steam as soon as the pressure cooking time was done, which would mean right now. I hope that's clear. Now you see this other pot, this is the Instant Pot Max. It does this when it comes to pressure. It does these little pulses for a little bit. Uh, it's the only model that really does it. It just stopped doing it. It's gonna start counting down any second now. Um, and then it will be done, the chicken, after about six minutes from there. And, uh, yeah, I, I just try to explain these as best as possible. It's a little more complex when you have two things going at once, but you get the gist. No, it's great. So someone has asked, she says, I absolutely love all of your recipes. Which one is your favorite recipe to make for friends? Oh, well, keeping it kosher. So um, oh, it's so hard to say. Honestly, uh, I think lately one of the ones that are the most impressive to me are spaghetti and meatballs because I feel like kids of all ages love that dish. It's so delicious. Um, of course, you can make your meatballs kosher. 
And um, you can cook spaghetti and meatballs all in one pot at the same time with no straining anything. Literally, you add all the ingredients in, you put the lid on, you pressure cook it, you set the time, you walk away, you come back, you release, you stir, you serve. All done in one pot. And that's wonderful because who wants to do all that cleaning after? Who wants to deal with it? Not me. So that's probably my favorite thing. It's a wow factor dish for sure because it's spaghetti and meatballs done in one pot. And it's really delicious. In, in your cookbooks, um, you mentioned that you have all of the introduction information on how to, what to do and, and how it works in the Instant Pot. Do you have that in all of your cookbooks or just? All, and every single one of my books. So now it's a good time to, to share them with you. We have an order of appearance. My original step-by-step -step Instant Pot cookbook, the orange book. Um, by the way, that intro that you read for me, I, I, I'm realizing it's way too long at this point. It has to be, I have to shorten it because I was like, I feel so narcissistic with the way you're introducing me. Oh, no, so thank I... you for that. It felt good hearing it out loud because I'm like, that's really narcissistic. Anyway, this is my, um, my original book is the Orange Cookbook. Came out literally um, in March of 2020, April of 2020, as I thought, uh, as I had COVID. And when it first came out and I was like, okay, I have COVID. I don't know. Let's hope that I see another day. It was very scary. I'm very grateful and thankful that this made it into the world, what it did, um, because I think a lot of people found use in it because a lot of people were cooking. Restaurants were really open for a good period of time. And um, this is my first book. It's my first baby, my pride and joy. Then my second baby came along, the lighter book, which we'll call the blue book. The original we'll call the orange book. The lighter we'll call the blue book, which is exactly what this recipe, the chicken cacciatore I'm making is from. Also, this white rice recipe is in this book as well. So technically both things are. But that, uh, that uh, ginger scallion uh, oil that I just made is in the next book coming up. But you see? We have all these things in here. All the books have the same format with the color photos, step by step. The third book is the yellow book, which is the simple comforts book. Uh, this is actually not an actual copy of my book. They call these books, um, what do they call these things? It's like a mock-up they send. Um, but this is not how it'll actually look. It's like black and white pages right now. It's going to look just like the other ones. Uh, they call them galleys, I believe. Yes, yes. galleys yes. is what yes. they call them. Right, right. And um, so this isn't even like the final bottle, but like it's something to have in my hand to show you. But the, it's actually going into print right now and it's being bound and it's very excited. I'm told I might have an actual copy in two weeks. So that's the yellow one. And the sauce that I just made for this rice is in this book. But except in this, in that book, it's actually called chicken. Uh, it's, it's chicken in the rice as well. So we mix it up together and it's, I just made a variation of it for now. So that's a good way to show you. You can take a recipe and alter it to something that you see fit. It's very easy once you've done it a couple of times. And I can say that I have I have your first two cookbooks, and um, and even my kids will eat like the chicken shawarma is a big big uh, hit in my house. Oh, um, wonderful! Uh, I'm so I'm thrilled to hear it. Thank you very very much. Um, and as somebody was asking with the spaghetti and meatballs, would that work with gluten free pasta? Doing it all at once. So when you're doing gluten-free pasta, you can do it in the Instant Pot, but typically it takes a little less time because it's more delicate and you don't want it to become mush. So tread, I would say if a recipe says eight, eight minutes for the spaghetti, go for like five minutes. If the spaghetti is still a little hard when the lid comes off, don't worry about it. The pot is still very, the, the, the sauce, everything is still very hot. The, the, it'll continue to absorb and cook into that pasta, soften and it will also thicken the sauce at the same time. Just have a little patience, let it, as things rest, the flavors come together more and sauces thicken, things become more vibrant. Great. Um, and the, there was a question about actually like, like cook, cooking vegetables, like squash, um, you know, does it, does it, are we supposed to pierce it first? It gets, it can sometimes make a big mess. Like what is, what do you recommend when you're cooking that? So I have a spaghetti squash recipe in the first book, and I basically just take it, I take a good sharp knife, I slice it right down the center, and I just put it right, and you could do it either, honestly, horizontally or vertically, whatever, scoop out the seeds, put it in the instant pot, on, a, on the trivet, it comes with a little trivet that rests in the pot, put a cup of water in there, and then just set the time, and it steams it to perfection. It really does. It does a wonderful, wonderful job. I also have lots of squash recipes. I have acorn squash. I have a butternut squash risotto and a butternut squash soup uh, through, spread out throughout my books. 
Um, squash is one of the easiest, most wonderful things you could do in your instant pot. And also, if you don't feel like cutting into like a, you know, the, probably the most popular squash you'll find in the market is a butternut squash. Uh, you don't feel like really cutting into it and doing those things. Oftentimes you can go to places like the market or Costco or something, and it'll already be diced up for you. It looks like cantaloupe can be very easily confused. Um, and you can just do that. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a question about a, using a regular pressure cooker. Um, well, the details on the amount of cooking time, would that be the same for a regular pressure cooker as it is in your Instant Pots? I wish I could answer that, but I've never used a regular pressure cooker in my life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's, and, and they're asking for a little bit of clarification when you said doubling the situation, if you have a six quart recipe going to an eight quart or having it to go to a three quart, do you mean the cook times or do you mean the amount of food that is in the recipe? Cook times stay the same for the, oh, pretty much always. It's just the ingredients. So you do, thank, so you, thank you for clearing yeah. that up and asking because that's a, I should have made that more clear. Great. All right. So our rice is going to be done in just about a minute or so, which is very exciting. And you'll see how this made perfect, perfect rice, um, which is always fun. And um, I, then I'm going to have to try that out. Because my favorite part of all these demos and videos and everything I always do is getting to try everything. Yeah, that's always very exciting and very fun. One of my favorite things. Uh, so I'm excited to do that. <laughs> Dinner. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah, well, so we'll you... just pretend that it's brown rice. Right. We'll just pretend. In our minds, it's brown rice, everybody. Yes. Um, so do you, um, somebody was curious how you got into cooking with the Instant Pot. Um, I hated my job. It was sucking my soul out of me every single day. And I love to cook. And it was therapy for me to come home and listen to Barbara Streisand and cook. Yes, that's true. Um, and uh, I basically one day said to myself that as a side project and a passion project to make me happy, uh, let me try starting a food blog. And then the Instant Pot was, had just come out. I saw that a lot of people were very confused on how to use it. And I saw an opportunity uh, to put myself in front of the camera because I was working in PR as a video producer behind the camera. And I always feel like I'm, I'm better on the camera than behind it. Um, by the way, let me see here. We're just about at 10 minutes uh, we'll release. And then at that point, uh, I started a video for mac and cheese just for, for fun. And I put it out there saying, let's see if anybody's interested in this. And I struck at the right time, I suppose. And I guess it was beshert that I got to uh, go into people's homes. and I became a very trusted uh, recipe developer and creator and I guess personality for this thing, which is very exciting. All right. So 10 minutes. Do you see on the pod? It says 10. All right, that means 10 minutes of a natural release has passed. I'm gonna finish this off by releasing my steam now, whatever's left in there, if any, probably maybe just a little bit of it. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll come back to my pot. I might've actually, well, there's still something in there. It's supposed to release. Oh, it's supposed to, from this one. I, this model is also one of the newer ones. And I thought when you hit the screen, it's supposed to come off, but I'm afraid to like screw with this right now. So I'm not going to. I'll let it come down on its own when it's ready. Let me see here. Am I hitting the wrong button? Give me one sec. Sure. Well, I guess it'll open at some point. Yeah. By the way, it is a very safe device. Don't try to ever force this thing. If it's not opening, just let it stay there. You know, that's what I always say. Uh, let me try one more thing here. Maybe that'll do it. And I'll, tell, I'll be honest with you, this is a newer model and it's very pretty, but I prefer having the release on top of the pot because it's just easy I don't have to rely on a button on the screen in case something is like why aren't you just releasing at this point um which so right now i'm at the mercy of the screen letting it release and i've done i've used this many times before a couple times and i never had any issue with it not releasing but here we are here we are so, um, 
this 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 rice, uh, Jessica. I don't think it wants to make an appearance. <laughs> we'll do our best. It seems that way, but we'll we'll and we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, the irony is that rice is literally it's two ingredients in there. It's water and rice, and it's like, what's going on here, my friend? What's going on here? What did I do? But right. um, it's I don't know why it's not releasing. Maybe somebody else out there can teach me something right now and explain how on the Dinson Hot Pro Plus to release the steam properly, because I have it on the quick release situation and it should be going, but alas, and there's no way for me to really... No, we don't want you to force it, because that would I'm be... Gonna, I'm gonna, I, am, I have a little bit of a trick here. Let's see if that worked. There we go. Hey. Is able to... Don't try whatever I just did. I'm not going to show you at home. It'll come off. There is our rice. It's perfect. Um, you flop it hey. up. <laughs> Okay, I want to show you. Look at this. Look at this rice. Just how it should be. Nice and fluffy. Wonderful. All right, let's put some of that in a bowl. And I just want to break in. I know that, um, you know, if anybody has to leave, we are recording this. We will be sending you the recording along with the recommendations and the tips um, within the next week or so. So, um, if you have to leave, don't worry, you will get to see the end. Yes. Okay, so here's my rice in a bowl. I love to add some of this wonderful oil. Make sure you shake it up, this ginger scallion oil. And then put it in there. I love this stuff. And then you can just mix it in. And again, pretend it's brown rice if you want. And I have to always go on my face for this part. That oil, I would put on cardboard and eat it. It is unbelievably delicious. So, so good. Mm. Ginger scallion oil. This thing was only five ingredients. Vegetable oil or any oil of your choice. About a bunch of scallions, the lower, the, the crunchier, whiter part. You can use some of the green part, of course, too. About four inches of ginger. You need that ginger, a knob, peel it, chop it up roughly, and uh, some soy sauce and kosher salt. That's it. That's it. Done. I need some more of that. It's so good. Any moment now, we're going to have our chicken complete. And then from there, you're going to see we're going to put those finishing touches next chicken cacciatore. I know we're running a little late, and I apologize, but what can I do? Like, I talk a lot sometimes. Okay, every you're getting a lot. Everybody is loving you in the in the chat. You're getting a lot of uh, of of love. Good, good, wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna move this. You should see this hilarious setup in my kitchen. I'm literally just moving things around. I'm like a hot mess on every level, but it's okay. We keep it real here. All right, how are we doing on time here? We're okay. just about done with the pressure cooking on this one too, very soon. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask. Sure. There was a question that came in about um, giving the a dish. Well, there were two questions that I got. One was again about the burn notice. Like if that burn notice comes on, what are we supposed to do? Um, I'll start with that. If the burn notice comes on, typically, it hasn't come to pressure yet. Or if it has come to pressure, release the steam, take the lid off the examine and see what it is. Chances are the bottom of the pot is gonna have something sometimes burned on there. Like whether it's tomatoes or meats or vet, something has burned to the bottom. Take some liquid, add it to the pot, try to scrape the bottom up a little bit. If this is a point where it's completely caked on, and that, I, I would say literally just pour everything out of the instant pot, into a, a large bowl or something like that. Go to the pot, clean it out, put it back, put everything back in, and start again. Add a little bit more broth. That's a very extreme situation. That that shouldn't happen often if you're following a good recipe. Um, but sometimes the pot. It depends on the model. The pot doesn't realize that um, there is nothing burned on there. It's a good because it, it, when the when the lid pops up, when the little pin pops up, and it comes to pressure and it begins to count down. 
the pot just, I, I think it's, it's feeling something in there in terms of it's reading, like in terms of it can feel the pressure itself, which is why it, it triggers it to start counting down, thinking the pot's of pressure. Sometimes things take a little bit longer and sometimes the pot at that point might feel like it hasn't come to pressure yet. So I'm just going to assume it did because it's taking longer because there's more volume in there and it starts to count down when it actually isn't ready yet. And then it triggers a burn warning when it shouldn't. Because oftentimes people were writing to me and they'd say, I got a burn, a, a burn notice on something. Of course, it wasn't my recipe. <laughs> now, sometimes it was, but um, it depends on the model sometimes. And um, I say, Does that, was there anything actually burn? They say, no. And I'm like, it's a model typically of a pot sometimes. So you have to learn your model a little bit. They're all slightly calibrated differently. But for the most part, everything should work exactly as I wrote in my books. The addition... It, it gives the dish, a, uh, oh, I guess there was a question about uh, why are some recipes a quick release versus a natural release? Well, excuse me, I'm done eating now. It's kind of like rude, right? Like, are you guys eating? I hope you are. I saved all my, like, you know, my meal up for now, so I'm like starving. Um, so the only time I ever, uh, ever natural release anything is if I'm cooking typically rice or roasts, meats. Typically rice needs some more time because if you let a pressure cook for like 13 minutes versus three minutes of a, a regular cook time and a 10 minute natural release, your rice is gonna get overcooked and mushy. You know, you don't want that to happen. With roasts, if, with meat, if you quick release, sometimes it sucks all the goodness out of the meat very quickly and it can dry it out a little bit. You want to give it like at least a five to 15 minute, depending on the range, um, natural release with most meats. Chicken, I never ever um, natural release, that is quick release. And um, the same pretty much goes for pretty much anything else, unless I'm like baking something like a dessert, which is in a separate pot, because then the Instant Pot serves as like a steam oven in that situation. So that's really the main difference there. Grains, beans, rice, uh, you'll usually have a natural release. Um, and then meats, like red meats, you will typically natural release. Somebody uh, said they're allergic to tomatoes. And are there any good substitution ideas for that? I don't like tomatoes raw. I hate them raw, actually. Um, but I love them cooked. But in terms of... Mm, that's... The answer to that one, to me, honestly, is not really. You don't have, there are certain dishes you don't have to add tomatoes to. They're just a small little player. A cacciatore, it's kind of a key player. So I would say there's a million and a half dishes out there. Try something different. If something is kind of reliant on the tomatoes. Like in this one, we had a can of diced tomatoes. We had crushed tomatoes. We're going to be adding some tomato paste right when this is finished, any second. And you're going to see it's kind of reliant here. So look for something different, I would say. If, in a dish like this. However, in other dishes where tomatoes are small little factors, adding a little in there, here and there, don't even worry about it. Just don't even add it. There, there's a couple of, uh, of people having conversations about uh, dog foods, and we know you have banjo. Do you ever cook banjo food in the in the Instant Pot? I actually do have a recipe for him. Um, and I, you know, when I released it, actually, a lot of people, the claws came out, so to speak. Um, people were like, very, it's a very touchy subject, pet food. If people are very touchy about their their animals, and I get it. Um, I'm very, I'm, I'm the most neurotic Jewish dog daddy that existed. So I get it. But, um, you know, everyone has an opinion on food. I What I make him in the Instant Pot in my recipe is very nutritious in my opinion for dogs. My vet said it was fine. So I used it. Um, but, uh, you know, every dog is different. I have, I used to use brown rice, literally some carrots, some broccoli, um and some peas and that's it like and just mix it together that's literally it you can eat it yourself it's very healthy very good for you um but it's a touchy subject for some people some people will say don't do that that's not you know like make sure you give them more nutrients your animals and this and that so it's all up to you how you want to do it but the food that i give my dog he enjoys and he never had a problem with it. so if he ever did i would never in a million years um feed it to him of course of course uh so, all right. Yeah. All right. Oh, there we go. We're done. Let me see. I think we're done. 
Oh, okay. No, we have one more minute. This one, see, like I told you, every, some, there's a lot in this pot. This one took a little bit longer to come to pressure and to begin counting down. They're all a little different, but at the end of the day, it doesn't make any difference. Like they're all going to cook. Everything's going to come out just fine. Don't worry about that aspect of it. But back to your question about burning in the Instant Pot, we don't ever want that to happen. And any recipe that I put in my books or on my blog, I make sure that it doesn't happen. I'm, at least through me first, because if it did, I would never release the recipe that way, obviously. But it's, it's a little different depending on your pot. I have like every model Instant Pot that ever existed and they're all slightly different, but they all give great results and they all work with a, with a generic recipe uh, following the same model. And when you're making, uh, somebody says that they have a duo and that there's buttons for different foods. So she, this you pressure cook, you did not use the rice function on the- I never use any of the preset buttons on any of my models. I only use um, the manual or pressure. <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Hold on. So that instant pot is similar to the other one where it automatically releases when it's done, except this one actually did it. The other one didn't. So anyway, here we go. This is releasing, it seems. We're in the final step here. <laughs> so a bunch of a bunch of people who think you need your own show on the Food Network. Do I? Thank you so much. That would be fun. I, I, what am I doing here? I'm like Marilyn Monroe, you know? It's like, woo! It's very fun. You can get a facial while you're here. Don't stand too close to it. Um, you might smell like tomatoes and peppers and chicken if, in this situation if you do. But to me, that says dinner and, you know... It's a very romantic smell. All right. What did I just do? <laughs> oh my gosh. I accidentally took the, unplugged the pot and it shut the thing. Oh my gosh. This is just hilarious today. <laughs> All right. Okay, there we go. Now we're, we're doing our thing here. It's almost done releasing a steam. Um, once it is, then obviously this will be done and then I'll be able to open it. I couldn't open it now because it's still locked. It's in its steaming position. This is what a release looks like, as we saw before. Um, and when this is done, you're gonna see that there's gonna be more liquid in the pot because the chicken will have released some drippings in there. And I'm gonna put my platter here. And then here we go. I'm gonna show you a really good trick, by the way with tomato paste, in case you don't know. You might know it, you might not, but you're gonna see something very life-changing with how to get this stuff out of there really nice and smoothly, you'll see. I was taught that and I'll always, always, always be grateful for the person who told it to me. Mm. I love this rice, I love that this oil. I could literally put it on everything. I, I keep talking about it, I love it so much. And it smells so good. Okay, we're just about to drop here our pin, and then we can get going and finishing this up. Took a little longer to do that little glitch, but something to work away. That's cooking for you. That is still very easy. I mean, I've been standing here the entire time talking to you, barely moving. You see how easy this is. Anybody can do this. Anybody. And while if I wasn't here with a camera on me with all these lovely folks watching, I would just be in the other room right now, um, you know, playing Wordle. <laughs> only for three thing. minutes, though, right? Like only for a few minutes. Well, you know what? I got my Wordle. My first, I've been playing 30 days now, my 30th day anniversary. Yesterday was my first Wordle that I got on the second try. And I was just like, I guess, horse for my first. I, oh. I'm, I, not everyone might have played it yet. It's not done, so I'm not going to spoil. But I got it on the second try, and I was very excited about it. This pin has just basically dropped. Yes, excellent. I'm going to take this lid off. I know everyone's hungry, me included. And we're going to get finishing touches here. First thing I want to do is I want to take this chicken, which is going to be super tender, and put it in a serving dish. All right. Oh, my gosh. It's really tender. Look, it's almost like falling apart all right wow Ooh. yep these tongs by the way are not the best they're very slick and they part of my french suck 
So I'm going to put them right here. All right. There's my, I love, it, it, literally, you don't need a fork. I mean, a knife, because that's how tender this chicken is going to be. Don't worry about, you never have to worry in an Instant Pot if you're doing a dish right, like, you know, when one is written well, that you'll never have dry chicken ever. You never should. And if you do, find a different recipe. Okay, oh, there we go. I knew I had one more in there. Okay. Oh, more. I have another drumstick. I think that's everything. Okay, got all the goodies out. Here's my chicken just hanging out. We'll come back to you in a second. All right. Let's get this sauce going and thicken it up just a little bit. First thing I want to do is I want to add in uh, two tablespoons of a red wine vinegar. Gives it a little bit of a nicer extra flavor there. And here's the secret to this tomato paste situation. You're going to use a can opener and open not just the top, but also the bottom of the can. What is going on with me? Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. I got the top and the bottom. And now what I do is I just take a small spoon here and then you just press like this and look at this right in there. It goes. Now the lid went in with it. So just fish that out. But presto, whammo, done as though. Everything, everything basically came out of, look at that, nothing stuck in there. That's one of my favorite things. This is one of my favorite things. I'm gonna wash my hands because I got some tomato paste on it. Oh. I'll also add in about a teaspoon of some honey if you want it a little sweet. You don't have to. It's a nice little touch. That's a nice substitute to adding something like brown sugar. This is a natural honey. And I love my cacciatore with some olives and I have about a quarter cup each of just like, you know, green olives and some Kalamata or black olives that I'm adding. And you could reserve some for topping if you wish as well. All right, perfect. And now let's just give all of this a stir. And what we're gonna do, as you normally would do this, the tomato paste is going to meld into the sauce and it's gonna give it a little bit of a thicker consistency. And now the longer, but don't forget, there's also still some dri drippings from the chicken in here, which is, when as this cools down, will pull the sauce together even more and congeal a little bit, which is wonderful. It adds this extra flavor and deliciousness to it. Everything in a pressure cooker, by the way, almost tastes better the next, next day because all the flavors have really come together when they cooled. Um, you never want to eat something when it's super duper hot right in the pot. You want to let it rest for a few moments before you serve it my opinion, unless it's rice or something like that, or a pasta dish. Um, but for the sake of time, we're gonna now take this wonderful sauce. We're gonna just drape it over all of this chicken. And you're gonna have yourself a delicious, wonderful, nutritious, very savory, loaded with flavor, tomato <laughs> chicken cacciatore, and there we go. Now I have to try some, of course, as I always have to. It's a really, it's just, it's a pretty dish. And this looks like one of those dishes that you like show people and you're like, look at that. Look at, I mean, I'm not the best plater or anything like that, but it's just a really nice, hearty chicken dish. I'm going to have some right here. Do you leave the pot on warm when you're, um, like now is it on warm or is it? It is on warm. It just naturally goes there after it's done pressure cooking. It sw swaps into the warm uh, position and it just keeps everything in there warm. So here we go. Here's my chicken cacciatore. Normally I would wait a few more minutes for the sauce to thicken up a little bit, but we're on the clock. And I'm just showing you right now. I'm not using a knife. Look at this chicken. Just look at it. Look at it. Right off the bone tender, completely perfectly cooked. Mm. It's so flavorful. 
It's savory. It's not like too salty. You just have that wonderful flavor of like it tastes like a, like, a, like an Italian garden on a chicken. Delicious. I love the olives. If you want a few extra olives to top yours off, do that. A nice presentation. But this chicken is literally just coming right off that bone. That chicken thigh. I love dark thigh meat for this. Mm. Delicious. Delicious. One of my favorites, for sure. Chicken cacciatore. Amazing. I think we're all hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Well, thank you so much for this presentation. It was amazing. It was so fun. Uh, technical glitches and all. Um, we recommend everybody follows Jeff on social media and check out his cookbooks. Again, we want to thank Karen and Jordan for sharing their meaningful story with us. Please take a moment to fill out the brief evaluation survey that's linked in the chat. As I mentioned, we are giving away one six quart Instant Pot to, to, one, to someone who fills out the survey. Um, if you're interested, please fill out the evaluation to enter the giveaway. Evaluations really do inform our programming. So thank you so much for filling that out. Um, please never forget that our social workers and genetic counselor are here for you and your loved ones. Sharsherit provides emotional support, mental health counseling, and other programs designed to help navigate you through the cancer experience. All are free, completely private, one-on-one. -on -one. Our phone number is 866-474-2774, and you can also email us at clinicalstaff at sharsherit.org. Finally, I want to share a couple of the exciting webinars we have planned over the next few weeks. Keeping your bones strong during and after cancer treatment is on February 15th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Learn how to keep your bones healthy and strong before and after cancer treatment. Uh, this is with Dr. Joy Wu, the Associate Professor of Medicine um, in Endocrinology at Stanford University School of Medicine. Also save the date for our next Shar Shared in the Kitchen, Shabbat Around the World with Naomi Nachman, who will be sharing some recipes to bring world cuisine to your Shabbat your Shabbat table on March 10th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, and the links to those are both in the chat. Um, please check out our website regularly to see what topics are coming up. You can also access the recordings and transcripts of all of our past webinars on our website. Uh, from all of us at Shar Share It, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.